and it's paper and send it down here. So our next speaker will be Ross Keating, uh, who, as most of you probably know, is in fact the author of a book uh, about Francis Gravison, about his life and uh, work both. So he is actually a scholar uh, who has worked in this formal subject area formally, and he'll be talking about situating Sri with God. Thank you for it. Jay Bravo. Um, I'm a little green with all this, I've done a lot of preparation, but courageously go on. Um, what comes to mind, I just want to bring Babu into focus before we begin, and, that, and his universal message, where he says, and it's a beautiful thing, it really reflects Baba's style as the avatar in a way. He says, I'm here to help everyone break free of their bondage in their own way. What a beautiful avatar. Mm -hmm. And Francis says, what a beautiful beloved he is. How personal he is. How intimate for each one. And what comes to mind also, being in Mundley Hall, listening to Eric for years, often he would begin his stories with, this is what I have gathered. I am not the authority. You are all my teachers also. This is what I have gathered, being with this avatar. And um, Ward beautifully placed the situation we are now in historically, this post mundly era. Um, and the guest speakers will also will be a, will become a guest speaker era too, who will be past that or post that. What do we do? And um, here we have to, how are we going to nurture Baba in our hearts in a way? Um, so this is what I've gathered. And I think um, just sharing him, in a way, this, this is what I've gathered, is, the, is a sort of a beginning of, a, I think, a conversation in, a, in the appropriate value with Baba. It's just, this is what I've gathered. I might, this is what I've got in my basket. It may not be yours, but I'd like to hear yours too, and we can share that. I think that's a nice way of starting it. Um, also, I think um, we did have a celebration once in Mundley Hall for Francis, and um, Money was there, and she said, we're not celebrating Francis. We're really saluting his love and service for the beloved. Um, that is the, the main point here. And I remember, um, Basho, the great haiku Buddhist poet, when he was about, when he was dying, about to die, towards the end of his life, he said, he said to his disciples, don't follow what I did, but follow what I was after. And um, I think that's appropriate for Francis too. Lack of sleep here. Okay, so let me start here situating the book. And I just want to sort of nestle it here. and and see where it fits, and basically the historical summary. There's a beautiful message from the Mundali, it's in um, The Real Treasure, about how we go about um, talking about Mundali and so on. And it's from Erich, actually. It says, enjoy the essence of the truth of Baba's words, no matter what the source is. They're universal, they pop up everywhere. However, do not get attached to the singer, the speaker, all the singer of the words, just associate with Baba. It is the attachment to anything other than him that will eventually cause you suffering. So focus only on Baba, but enjoy everything that reminds you of him and helps you remember him. And what a great reminder of him is Francis. Um, there's one line uh, out of one of the guzzles I think is pertinent here. Francis says, think of the men who went before. Think of me. Um, those who will come after. Do not give up. It's a great encouraging message. Earth, millions of times, our troubles are matter for huge laughter. And then this great line, the end of the affair was in the beginning. It's already in the bag. <laughs> There's no need to worry, really. You know, we have this managing director here. Avatar, he exists, he's real. Um, it's already, it's sewn up. Do not give up. And then he says, the conclusion of our journey is in our singing. 
That's very Brabazonian, if I can use that word. For Francis, I think, this is a key point I'd like to make for these talks, is our praising, our singing of Fababa is our end. The rest is his. That's Baba's affair. God realization, mukti, and everything else. The, the, the thing that we can do, and I think culture, when it's really has the values in it, is a type of singing. Like Ward was saying, everything we do has that quality of values coming through. And to me, that's what Francis would say is art. Love coming through in all that we do. That's a singing, that's art. That's Barbie in our lives there. And our singing is what we can do. You know, what we can do. Our a gross level in the body as we are here. And the rest, I think, is sort of um, Barbara's affair. It's his grace. So, um, Francis starts off. Oh, he's a, in the preface of Stay With God. In this book, I have tried to offer praise to one who has not so much changed the course of my life as given it sanction, given it approval. He was a poet born, Francis. And um, it's so interesting, isn't it, that here we are down in what Paul Keating called the arse end of the world, Australia. <laughs> and he picks up this guy, you know, middle of nowhere, on a farm in Glen Rowan. And it says, you're my man. <laughs> you know, you're going to do this. And he talks with this 1940s slang when he really gets going. And the avatar, the avatar returned, Buddha Christ. This, this is the poet. Um, it's really quite interesting. And Baba coming here twice also is quite interesting. This place here and Francis living here. And the voice of Baba's poet is an Australian voice. I won't make too much of that, but that's, that's the voice. He's really um, telling us to, to, giving us something here. And then he says, I used to weep at the beauty of night, and a little later on composed verses on the meaning of life. So there for me is this beauty and truth, this beauty of night. Weeping at that, he's a young kid. No, he's only a teenager, weeping at night. And then meaning of life. So you've got this beauty and truth. I think poetry fuses these two in Francis, and that's a great value of his too. It's not just for romantic self-expression or confessional stuff so much in Francis' eye. It's this fusion of these things. And they, we can dissect them for conversation, but they're really a one. Truth will only be said in beauty as part of its meaning together. And um, I remember... Um, there's a line which I like in Thomas Merton. He was saying that um, one's inwardness, one's spiritual life, is in direct relation to one's responsiveness to life. It's not going in and trying to be really spiritual. It's, it's your response to life is the degree of your inwardness. And Francis weeping at night, little kid, he's so responsive, he's out there. And I remember his biography too, he has this lovely line about listening to small voices, little things. He's really attentive to life. That's where it happens. It's not this going in. Remember once he had a biography of Bartok, he was reading that, and he was uh, really taken by a line where the biography that Bartok could hear a bug under bark <laughs> moving. He was so sensitive, and um, Francis sort of a uh, Pick that out as something quotable. Look at that. You know, he's very sensitive to life. We're not away from life. This is really, this is going to, we're in the centre of life of spirituality and Bible and poetry and things. This is the centre of things. Okay. Um, so this, when he met Baba, it's interesting to read his comments when he met Baba, what, what the effect was on him. And he says here, I was satisfied that if ever it was possible to see God on earth, I had seen him. And as time went on, the proof that this has not been some, merely some emotional conversion, this is the proof statement, was shown the simple fact that a true creativity began in me a few days after the meeting and continued ever since. So he measures this thing of meeting Baba. The real proof of it was the true creativity. Baba coming through in him, 
That was his proof. And um, I think that's sort of significant too. Um, because it's, it's a theme in Francis too, that you know, we have to touch Baba. He comes, his, his voice comes through in us deeply. And our life has to be free and creative, and that's Baba in us coming through. And I think there's a connection. We could talk more about that perhaps later. Um, but um, for him, the Baba connection is a sort of creative thing. And it's more touched on, too. A lot of the Westerners were, were artists, and a lot of the people who came to Barbara after were artist types. The evangelization is over. It's just not in Barbara's pattern, is it? I mean, it's really, you have to, what's beautiful about art and, and things, it just stands there without having to promote or push anything. It just speaks for those who have eyes to see it. It seems to be Barbara's medium these days. The art galleries have become the sacred spaces these days. They're the real churches we have. And I think Francis is picked up on that. Um, also, one other point I want before I go to that is, um, I missed it there, I just thought of it then, is that Francis had this amazing capacity to hear Baba inwardly, very, very strongly, as much as he saw him and was directed outwardly from Baba. The spirit of guidance which he got from sort of Sufism, so it's a night calm term. He felt that and he was read his life and things happened to him. And then when he's writing, he really does feel Baba, this true creativity, this voice in him, speaking to him. So he could really hear Baba internally. And later on, when I, one of the quotes is, he said, Baba says to him, I am very proud, Francis, that I wrote this book through you. Which just proves it, you know. I'm very proud that I wrote this book through you. You know, there's Baba there. It's my book. He signs his name on it. A mess of Irani. This is my book. Um, and that, and yet he's so quirky, individual and specific, uh, distinct. And I think that comes up in this here. This is 1955, the Sahavas. It's an Eastern Sahavas, and Francis is there with Don Stevens. And um, it's great messages on there on how to work, uh, how to spread Baba's name and so on. Let me read it through. This is Baba. My work for you does not consist in you going around beating a big drum for me. Love needs no propaganda. You need love yourself in order to propagate love to others. You have to have love within you. To spread my love amongst people, you have to make them understand as you understand me, as you love me, in a sense. For that, you have to bring them to love me as you feel it. The best way is to show others by your example how much you love me. The world is too full of preachers and teachers. Now, this is the awakener we're talking about here. Never forget that I've come not to teach. I need no preachers. So this stay with God. I, so Francis is so distinct in this that Baba said, okay, you're an artist, you've got the freedom. There's hardly any censoring going on. There was negotiating all the time, but Baba's basically giving Francis free reign as an artist. He's honouring that position. Um, and he says, I'm, I'm speaking within you, so uh, you've got freedom to speak as you like. Um, which is great to know the avatar gives us that freedom to do these things. And therefore you get this distinct sort of Australian voice, but it has this universal appeal. You know, like the great artists you do read about, they're very specific out of a place, but because they really dig down deep, they get this universal message coming through. Um, and of course that comes through in some statements, I think, this freedom and the fact that he is just writing how he feels about his understanding, his love. Francis says, what I've written may be of value to others, but if not, not. That's their affair. Mine was in the writing to convey my feeling of love, which I have here. So that's sort of in answer to that Sahaba saying, I think. And in um, Robert's book, The Water Carrier, evangelism is message minus beauty of form. Dry bones, you know, impersonal, um, useless in a way. 
And so is no message because God made his beauty itself. And this is Baba's message, really, fundamentally, I think, for Francis, and he really conveys this, has to be done artistically and beautifully. Otherwise, it's no message. It's real cheap to do it. Words are thrown out everywhere, but you have to do it and present it beautifully. And stay with God is just a beautiful thing. Um, done that beautifully, there it is. The medium is a message. So I just want to go now and go through some of the sort of historical things. Am I going on? So Baba asked Don Stevens, who was there with Francis, to write a book. And to Francis, Baba said, uh, and to Francis, he was there too. Um, you've, you've stayed with me. You've journeyed with me on the under 254. Now you've stayed with me. And after the under, you wrote Journey with God. Now write Stay with God. So he gave him the title of that book. Um, which I think is significant too. It's a great Baba message in itself, not just a title for a book. It's a Baba message. Baba's name's underneath, underneath that. Stay with God. And what a great message for a culture, our culture. You were mentioning that you dare not mention the name of God in academia. You know, you're just, just not there. But he is, it's a great message in itself. And I think Francis, you know, really did take that as the, the mantra from the Master. Stay with God. This is the words given to me, and to write that book. And Francis did feel very, very strongly that when Baba said something for you to do it, that had greater significance than if he just wrote stuff. It was very, very significant that Baba asked him to do it. That invitation to do it really gave it importance. And I think that probably gave him the energy to, to go on and do this epic story. When Baba came in 56, of course, he's running around still building my house. And uh, recorded in Robert's book, Baba says, Francis, where's the book? <laughs> and you're 55, I wanted the book. Where is it? He didn't say, where's the book? He said, where's my book? Where's my book, sorry. Where's my book? Francis, I'm sorry, Baba. I will start immediately after you have left. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, as Robert described it, Baba pauses. And so looking into the future, and obviously he's, you know, knows Francis. Is, that'll be satisfactory, all right. <laughs> so Francis got a little bit of extra time there. Um, so Francis, um, and this is where Robert's book is so rich in details about this, began with a sort of a journalistic article. And Journey with God is a little bit like that. And Francis liked all the details and measurements of things, and things got organized, and these number of people turned up. He was very descriptive that way. It's interesting too, isn't it? Because our conception of a poet is some sort of romantic <coughs> guy who's away and dreaming. Francis was very hands-on, very sensory, very here now. The, the typical idea of a poet we have doesn't quite fit him. He was definitely, and yet he could go into these great deep spaces of love. <coughs> So um, he began the sort of article, which was not very satisfactory. But Robert suggested, why don't you write poetic? But that's your nature. That's how you sing. And um, Francis showed up with the opening lines, which he had carried around with him since 1941. Um, and this sort of upbeat singing line, wings towards the glaciers of Kailash, where the first furrow Fathers nourish the seed of God, and Shiva gentle Ganga, and Pavati a walk by streams of living heart. What a great entrance in this is. This is the abode of all gods, Shiva the first god, this is where he lives. And Francis starts off at that peak. This is epic proportion, we're at Kailash here now. And this is where the great Ganga river was softened on the back of um, uh, Shiva because it came from the heavens. And so he went to this great sort of a mythological world, but it's true in the sense that he's representing true forces. So Francis um, was taken, they said, yeah, that's fine, that's, that sounds good. And um, then he moved to Robert Lorne's place, which they lived at Bondi. I'm not sure what that, why, why that was. Maybe it's because, you know, my house, Bill and Joan and three kids, and what's Jen's about two, Mike, you about five or something? Three. Three. 
you know, five, five, and Marie's like a couple of years, so it's it's noisy, <laughs> I imagine. And um, I suppose Robert was also a good sounding board for for Francis. Robert has read a lot, and he he knew the stuff Francis was in on, so he wanted him there too. Um, he took three books with him, I gather. God Speaks, The Oxford Dictionary, and Fowler's Modern English Usage. There you are. Man with a Mission. Um, in actual fact, he then did the Fowler's with Modern English Usage. Later on, he got onto the American English Usage by Margaret Nicholson. He loved that book. He thought, what a beautiful book this is. And the per person who writes it, she even wrote, sort of gave her little quotes and stuff with a sense of humour. He really liked that. That's the book he had in... India for the guzzles and stuff. There's a good record to know. So he's extremely bold. This is an extremely bold undertaking. It is, you know, incredibly daring thing to do. Each of those books is incredibly daring undertaking. You know, what a nerve. Even building stay with God, about building my house. What a nerve. You know, this is a stone block. And he's going to quarry it. Doesn't own stone masonry. Go going to learn it. Build this place. Um, there must be a trait there in the family of the Brabazons. You know, his brother was the first to row down the Murray River. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge undertaking. His father coming out here, very bold. There's something in the Brabazon trait, I think. I remember coming up, uh, Barbara said when he came in 58, Yes, I'm happy enough to stay at my house, but I, my preference is in Queensland. And that was enough for Francis. Okay, I'll do that. And yet he's, you know, blood, sweat and tears building his my house. Comes all the way up here. I remember Eric saying he was very impressed by that. How bold he is. And so you get this. This is an incredibly daring thing to do. Francis wrote longhand, Lorna type. Robert was a sounding boy. <coughs> And Francis was very particular about the language he used. You know, he's he very much a craftsman, and um, he wanted that book to be dignified, with, in the sense of being correct. Um, so that was all good. <coughs> I'm conscious of time a little bit. Um, because, you know, to, to write well, where the comma goes, where the word goes, is an act of love. To write well is a loving act. So in itself, just the craft is because I want to communicate exactly and honour the subject I'm talking about. So that's loving <coughs> itself. So this theme here, this knowledgeableness of self, oneself, and the advent on the earth at this time of a person who is the self absolutely and consciously. Even the, the choice of the word self here is very sort of existential. It puts us in it. We're in it. We've got a self. The closest one is our own self here. And he uses that oneself and the advent of the earth the person who has realized that, who's proof that you will be that too, inherently. Whatever is epic in my work, it's a degree of which I'll, handle this, I'll properly handle this theme. In the world context, whatever is lyrical is my personal relationship to it. I think it's the beauty and truth again. Another one of those, got five of mine. Okay. To seek to give a contemporary picture of this man and to establish certain principles concerning him, which is Jeff will pick up on that perennial philosophy. So if the avatar's got a new message, well, it's not really the avatar in a way. It's, it's the same thing, but he gives it that new spin, what's been lost. Okay, um, it's a book written in praise of divinity with the assurance of man in divinity. This is, this is the great thing, that we are, have this divinity as our heritage. I'm going to, I want to, because I've only got five left to go, I want to go to a, something here. Um, Actually, Ward brought some of his comments of Barber here. Let me just pick some which, which I think are worth looking at. Um, when Francis went there, he got to read it and go through it with Barber. And there's a nice little part here, yes, I'll read that. Um, Barber said, I was so touched by this, this book. What would its effect be on the people in times to come when they read it? They, uh, they will not be able to help weeping. Mundley were weeping during this reading, I gather. Um, and what's good about it too, those words, you know, we, we worry about archives and stuff, but these words went into Baba's ears. These went intimately into him, and we read them now, we roll them out. And these words 
please, Baba, let me weep. And that I think that's there's some, that the fact that Baba heard this book so thoroughly means that it has a potency too to it. Um, and there's a nice little bit of Baba humor here. You see, it's just as well I didn't give Francis realization, or else we shouldn't have we wouldn't have had this book. <laughs> <laughs> Avataric humor there. <laughs> line. Um, and Baba gave three new discourses. And it's interesting, in Robert's book he talks about, you know, how Baba's playing with it. Okay, now rewrite that, and Francis is rewriting it, and Eric is talking about it. It's negotiating all the time. He's the avatar, well, just give it to him, Baba. What are you playing around with? But Baba has that game still. He plays with it, you know. Because he's just, you know, he's being very human here, I think. Getting Francis to really get to know it by rewriting it. So, that's sort of interesting here. Um, and he requested the foundation, the notes, and, and bits and pieces to write. And he wanted all the sections done, which I think is great as a study guide. It's great Baba did that, because he wouldn't have had those references. And I know that Robert and Joanna did a lot of the searching around and sent back the references. And Baba, of course, puts a timeline on, on it all. Um, the whole book has now been read to him. Most of this is Francis. Most of the verses read two or three times or four times with his additions and received his seal. So that, my dear encouraged and fellow workers on it, is that. And he took the introductions all finished and he wrote this philosophical basis, the foundation, not introduction, but the foundation, which is sort of interesting. Francis said once, she'll recommend it, what, what should I read? I want to be a part Francis. And he said, read God Speaks. Get a foundation. Get somewhere to stand. Modern poetry doesn't have that. This is, this is, this is a new breed of poets. Okay, there's a beautiful section here where Barbara Francis, the book arrives, he doesn't open it. Next morning, he puts it on a platter with wire flowers and brings it to Barbara mm -hmm. in Mundley Hall for Barbara to open. And Barbara's all very excited about it. And I'm just picking up at a point here. Then he opened the package carefully, layer by layer, telling me to save the save and keep the wrappings until he came to the last wrapping, under which he peeped, leaving me a god to also see. Then he took off the last wrapper, and there was a beautiful book. He held it up for the men Monday to look at, but didn't let them look, didn't let them look too long or touch it, but stood up, tucked that under his coat, and marched off the house to show Mayor and the women. Isn't that a beautiful picture? <coughs> Baba's little child had come now, you know. Okay, I'm going to skip this because there's a very interesting part here. Well, some of the things Baba says, stay with God is come and stay with me. To come to stay and my love to all those who help to make the perfect, perfect book that it is. And this, I agree, that I put that about the highest intellect and those with simple hearts. Francis thought that was the best um, praise Baba gave. And there's no philosophy in this book. Baba said philosophy is life made difficult. It should be in front of in Latin, in front of um, universities. Uh, it, it contains food for the brain and a feast for the heart. And we've had that one, Ward read that one out too, about um, how Bob is so enthusiastic about this book. Absolutely. Beside himself with the joy of it. Bob is said to be read for a thousand years and there'll be volume written on it. I'm proud, so proud to have written this book for you. Second only to God speaks. Okay. Um, and this Francis said, you know, it should not be advertised or publicized as a religious book, but as a piece of literature. All these books he didn't want put into mystical presses and stuff. He wanted them as literature. Um, it's a book about the avatar of the age, about spiritual, social values. A nice little link there. I believe it's well written and Barbara's praised it. That was a comment to um, one of the men. And there's other comments here. I like Ciardi's comment. Ciardi was a great, great poet critic. He translated Dante. And Ciardi said, you know, there's a great rising of breaking of waves. I love that. It's so warm, you know, this voice comes out here and it crashes against there. And it's, it has a, to me, it's a great image. Okay. What's that? What does that mean? 15 minutes of Q&A. Oh, damn. Okay. No, talk more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you 
can ask him to go on and skip Q&A if you like. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I won't be long, it's nearly finished here. But he's, he sent copies, Francis said at the end that he got a sore hand from, because he, then he did all the sharing the stuff. Copies went to Aldous Huxley, well Huxley I think it was Aldous, J.B. Priest, who was a great English critic, Eleanor Roosevelt got a copy, and Ezra Pound of course got a copy, and I want to pick up on that on the, the last talk. But this is the one I want to look at. Judith Wright's got a copy, because Judith Wright anthologised Francis, and she's one of our greatest poets. And um, she wrote a beautiful letter in return. Let me just read this part of it here, because it is pertinent to the idea of Francis's He's so critical. This is a barber who's loved, and the book is just so full of, you know, take no prisoners. How can you have this and have an avatar who's all love? So she picks up on that. Thank you for my copy of Stay With God. I'm sure that you know I shall keep it and use it. There is no comparable work of devotion in our time that I know of, and I think it takes its place with authority with real sincerity. It's a great comment from Judith Wright. Should one then speak of contemptible history? Should one despise, have contempt for anything? That's a line out of Francis, contemptible history. Uh, is God, if God is in the stone, if God is the stone in the stone and the tree in the tree, is he not also history in history? No, no matter what happens, I feel the way to redeem is to love and to understand, truly understand without condemning. Is not your way, forgive me, Francis, the way of those <coughs> who have made cults of their gods and ended by betraying them in formulation by persecuting in their name? This is a sort of a feminist particular way. This is very strong. Then she says, perhaps I'm quite wrong about this. I hope I am. There's no room left in the world for any more persecutions, but so much room for love. I have no stone to stand at all to stand on when I talk like this. I only wonder. But I do thank you for the love poetry. As you and the first poem said, when you wrote of love, you wrote well. Beautiful letter. And she's really getting an edge here. So that requires a response. So I thought about that. And when he came back from the under tour, he said this, Francis. I have returned from the journey with God, 54. Not with some pseudo bliss and peace, but with an anger against our fearful smugness and arrogance. Our frightening, tomastic envelopment with ourselves. That's like a form of... Uh, Sanskrit word about this sort of, um, I've got it down here, darkness manifesting activity, our sluggishness, our tomastic envelopment with ourselves. The darshan of the Lord by his 1,000 devotees ones has stripped at least some of the veils obscuring my thinking of ourselves. It's a social thing here, not just me, but of ourselves. And I see us Westerns now in our utter spiritual poverty and our complete material insecurity. Baba has told me to return to Australia and spread his message, name and message. I returned. I looked around and I cried, where, oh God, do I start? <laughs> <laughs> so he's come back, not this guy is going to be blissfully meditating up of this wonderful avatar, the beloved. He's, he's out and he's sharpening a sword now. That's the flavour that you get from the state of God. I think. He has this prophetic stance. And it needs some solid slugging to make people wake up out of this envelopment of sluggishness. So it comes out of that. Um, and he says, you know, I've a, in the preface, of course, he's born in, in Western culture. If I'd born in another place, I would have only sung its praise. Analysis and comment would never occur to me. But you see, um, he did that. And let me finish with the last thing here. The role of the poet is Francis sees that. And this is what he, his vocation is. When the poet knows his job, which is not one of versification, versification is merely his tool, but the job of plumbing the depths of his own heart and integrity, and of being able to feel the hunger and need of people, then poetry will take its proper place. In Andre, he comes back here and he feels the need of Western culture. These people are lost in a dream. They need a book which is a sledgehammer. They need a book which is not a text, but a book which is going to awaken. This is a book of awakening, not teaching so much. And I think that sort of prophetic wrath is what's pushing him here. And it's taken no prisoners. You know, it's, it's just so cutting with people. 
because he wants to break open here. This is, this is his role he sees as the poet. He has to mine the depths of people, find out what they're really feeling and thinking, and then speak out of that. It's, it's a social occupation. It's a vocation. It's a part of, the poet is a, has a place in society. Um, they're not just sort of some confessional sort of a poet. And then in the, there's a quote from um, Seven Stars of Putty, in the poet's hand is the destiny of men's children. So, I think Fran Baba obviously saw that, you know, this guy out of all this Western culture, this guy in Australia, <coughs> he somehow knows this. And um, Baba's picked up on him. Show Baba. <laughs> Francis took over is in the archives here. And oh. So I think that is a really precious document. I, I think Francis would have put notes in there because that would have gone back to the publisher mm. with the changes. That would be interesting to see what Barber did. Yeah. But in Robert's book, he does talk about certain things. The Barber said even that wasn't this, that was a well. And so he put the word well in there, like a thrown into a well, not into a lake or something. Barber did make these little corrections. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? He really put a lot of time into this. Yeah. Anyone else? Does the manuscript have like some of the corrections or changes that Baba had? Uh, I haven't looked at the original manuscript. It was it was all tied up, and I, I just when I looked at it, I just left it there like that. Yeah. Yeah. I just heard a comment about Bondi and your curiosity about it kind of stood out that why these three crucial people were sitting there in Bondi, which remains an iconic cultural <coughs> yeah, place of Australia not... now, that all yes. the world knows about Bondi. Yes. And it's also a beautiful golden crescent beach. Yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. I don't think Bondi was an accident. Maybe. It is How a did Francis learn so much stuff? <laughs> Yeah, he's an autodidact too, isn't he? He finished school at 13. Well, this is when there's a need to know. This is a measure of his need to know. That's where you get your energy from. How bad did he need to know? He obviously was just... Because at some point there, we see he got even a bit suicidal. He was really destroyed, you know. Um, so he's, um, he has this deep need to know. And I think also the Baron must have had a very good library. Mm -hmm. The Baron came along and, you know, he's a very cultured man and knew all those connections in Europe and Germany. So he said he had a great library. So I think the Baron would have helped him a lot with that. And of course, Francis said books came his way. Books, he picked up books of the library, the, 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 um, the poet saints of Maharashtra, pulled them down, didn't know why he bought them and took them home and years later they were just what he wanted. But what a, what a place Melbourne must have been back then too, to have those books. Yeah. Melbourne was quite a place. You know, in, in the 40s and 30s, quite an intellectual, this is the birth of modernism in Australia. Francis is right in there. Um, he, he also worked in the State Library of Victoria. That's right, that's right. Two books away. Small correction perhaps for us. I don't know about him buying many books. I think he stole them. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> correction accepted, but, okay. <laughs> Didn't he but take he had them a pretty good library though? here too he when he came. He took them back. He'd take them and read them. Well, no, he no, would only take back the ones that would be of no use to him. <laughs> Ross was trying to improve the record. <laughs> because it's not for irresponsible ears to hear that. <laughs> Great artists steal. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, it's tea time now. Tea, coffee. The Brazil lady won't allow that. We were in 15. 11.15.